Yo, 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 what is going on? It is your boy Weekly Uploader here. I am sorry that I've only been posting basically like once a week on Friday for a bit. I've been getting back into streaming on Twitch and it's been kind of messing with my schedule, but I've just, I've been enjoying the stream so much, man. It has been interfering with my recording schedule typically for nerd plays, but I'm, I'm trying to get it going. I'm trying to get it all figured out. So we're here on the boy clients today. This is modded Black Ops 3 on PC. I posted it on the main channel. If you guys have seen that, then you already know what it is. If you don't, basically you just have to buy Black Ops 3 on Steam. Steam, and if you search up boy with like bo with three eyes you will find the website where you can support momo's project or maurice's project you'll get access to the discord and there's instructions on how you get access to the clients and how to get it set up all sorts of stuff like that so that's what we're going to be playing today i do want to talk about kind of like the future of these clients and a little bit more about sm2 i know this is going to be kind of strange because on the main channel i was saying i don't really want to speculate about the situation i don't want to make assumptions and i still do feel pretty strongly about that but honestly today i wanted to make some assumptions about Activision and why they're potentially doing this. So out of fairness, I don't know if it would necessarily be fair to then not make assumptions about what might have gone wrong with SM2. So I will give you guys my full two cents about both sides of the story. While playing some Black Ops 3 today, I don't know what we're doing. I, I think I'll just go into like this uh, gun game extended. I really don't care about like what we're playing. I just want to talk to you guys and vent and give you my thoughts because there's some really crazy stuff that I want to talk about today. Um. So first things just error really i can't play this one i i don't even know what i joined i accidentally clicked join so much i don't even okay it's the gun game server well now i guess it's working now okay so first things first let's talk about sm2 let's talk about the sm2 dev team and why they potentially got the cease and desist order from activision which at the end of the day is what killed it off and i'm gonna be making some assumptions here i could be correct i could be wrong i just want to preface that i just want to make that very well known before we jump into this topic i am not the one that got the cease and desist order i do have some communication with the sm2 team but obviously they're not going to explicitly tell me what's been going on that is ultimately their private business their dealings not mine also holy qua oh no Oh, oh, we got them all. I don't know why we're not getting promoted. This is so weird. I guess it's just going to be KRM gameplay then. But anyway, there's been a lot of conversation about the final dev blog post that went up for SM2. You guys might be familiar with it because I did talk about it briefly. It was basically the announcement they made to switch from the original Modern Warfare 2 2009 engine to the Modern Warfare Remastered engine from, I believe, 2016. They made that announcement, and one thing that a lot of people were speculating about is the fact that in that blog post, they were kind of implying that you would not need to buy Modern Warfare Remastered in order to play sm2 now i think you guys know where this is going that starts to get into some gray territory as far as it goes for whether or not this could be piracy whether it could be stealing from activision because you wouldn't have to buy the game in order to play the client which is probably a no-no when that comes up in the conversation then yes obviously it kind of seems like things will not fly with activision again it's just speculation but that could have been a big misstep from the team but what i do want to add on to this part of the conversation is that i don't think it's fair to go after the team just because they might have made a mistake bruh we all make fucking mistakes shit happens now obviously this affects more than just like one person making a mistake this affects the entire team it affects the little community that they built up that was supporting sm2 over all of this time it could be as simple as that i mean shit happens it could have just been a uh, really unfortunate mistake <laughs> this is making me think of that fucking meme you see on twitter of like oh i'm here to defend the multi-billion dollar company well here's the catch activision is a fucking multi-billion dollar company they will most likely not feel the effects of maybe a couple hundred maybe a couple thousand people not buying modern warfare remastered on steam these motherfuckers generate over a billion dollars in microtransactions every quarter not to mention the fact that every yearly release of call of duty is basically a guaranteed one billion dollars in their pockets you gotta be shitting me dude oh you didn't buy modern warfare remastered oh you can't have the sm2 now like come on bro you fucking kidding me what's even more ironic is that this is a remaster of a game back in the day i probably bought like fucking five copies of call of duty 4 because we were stupid kids and when we would put the disc in our xbox 360 if we wanted to move the 360 around you know like from room to room whether it was like living room or like our own bedrooms and shit we would accidentally have it running and flip the console from like vertical to horizontal and like back and forth and shit so we scratched so many of our cod 4 discs we had to buy that game so many times over again because we were fucking idiots and we gave them more money 
money than we probably should have, but COD 4 was also a legendary game, so of course we were going to rebuy it if we fucked it up. But anyway, I'm not sitting here trying to advocate for piracy of Call of Duty games and Activision games. Obviously, that isn't right, and I think there's a couple of things that could have maybe led this into a better situation. Hindsight is obviously 2020. Everyone's going to look back at this and be like, oh, well, they could have just said you had to buy Modern Warfare Remastered. But they didn't necessarily want to do that because they were telling everyone else to buy Modern Warfare 2 on Steam, so that way they can make things legit, and you would have to own the original Modern Warfare 2 on Steam in order to play SM2. What really sucks about all of this is that the SM2 team is literally so dedicated, so passionate, and ambitious about trying to make the best possible COD mashup game that they could, that they needed to move to a new engine to make things happen. And that's what actually genuinely sucks about the situation, because their ambition, their willingness to actually try to innovate and improve things is what kind of led to this outcome. But let's look at things from Activision's perspective, right? They're a multi-billion dollar company, they got millions and millions of people playing the newest Call of Duty games. Even though a lot of us would like to think that the newer Call of Duty games are dead, there's still a shit ton of people playing them. The newer Call of Duty games are like a behemoth compared to the mosquito that SM2 is, or was. So even if the idea of pirating a game or just not paying for a game bothered them, they could have still potentially reached out to the SM2 team and been like, hey, we noticed that you guys made this announcement about not having to buy the game in order to play, and we can't necessarily stand behind that. They could have actually started by giving them a warning you know, like, warn them about what they're doing is not good, and that if they don't require a purchase for Modern Warfare Remastered, if they didn't require, you know, like, Steam integrity checks, that they would issue them a cease and desist by that point. If they didn't adjust. They didn't do that. They just went straight for it, dude. And that's exactly the point I was trying to make when I first talked about this, is that it's fucking Activision, man. They can do whatever they want with the IP. They can make it the best possible game that they want, they can be, you know, nice to the community, or they can do something like this and just shut the shit down without even trying to re with them. But that does bring me to my next and final point, which is honestly the most important one out of all of this, which ultimately boils down to the question, why would Activision need to shut this project down if it's not even remotely close to competing with the newest Call of Duty games? Even though people are very, very vocal about how much they loved the idea, the concept for SM2, we still have to come back down to reality and understand that SM2 was not going to have millions and millions of people playing it on a regular basis, the way that people are doing with the newest Call of Duty games. I've seen some people say some stuff like, oh, Activision is afraid of the competition that SM2 was going to give them. I mean, maybe, but I don't know if I can completely get behind that. I cannot imagine that the CEO of Activision really knows what's going on as far as it goes for the entirety of the COD community. I'm sure he's got an idea of what's going on with the current games and stuff like that, and the plans for the future of the franchise, but I don't think he's really paying that much attention to, you know, like SM2, Plutonium, X-Labs, anything pertaining to Call of Duty games that are like maybe 5, 10 plus years old. It's not on their radar because those games are done and over with. They're not going to generate the same amount of money that the new games will. So is it possible that Activision is afraid of the competition from SM2? I don't know. I don't think so. But there has been some stuff that's been going on with Activision for quite a while now that I'm going to finally talk about, and I think it might all pertain to that. This is going to be a doozy, guys, so buckle up. Before we jump into this, I do want to say that I'm probably going to be paraphrasing some things. There's some things that I might not get completely right, so just take what I'm saying with a grain of salt, please. Some of this might also be the conspiracies of a Call of Duty nut who's been playing this franchise for way too long. But I want to go back to 2021. I, I think that was the year when Vanguard came out and, and also when the sexual assault allegations were coming out about some employees at Activision. When all that stuff went down, a lot of people were saying that they wanted to boycott Activision. They didn't want to buy or play their games anymore. And this is where I'm not exactly sure the specifics of the situation. I think there is a pending investigation or a pending lawsuit. But what conveniently happened shortly after that announcement is that Microsoft announced that they were going to be trying to acquire and buy Activision. Obviously not just Activision, we're talking about ABK, Activision, Blizzard, and King. So they would own everything. They would own their games, their IPs, you name it. Very conveniently timed, wouldn't you say? But what's been also happening over the last couple of years that they've been trying to acquire ABK is they've been facing some difficulties. Now I know recently the European Union Commission thingy, whatever the fuck you call it, I don't even know. I've been trying to keep up with this shit, but <laughs> it's tough, man. Basically the European Union approved the deal and they're okay with it. But the UK CMA has blocked it. So I think they've got to go to court. They've got to get that figured out. They're going to try to, you know, actually get the deal to go through regardless. They're going to fight it. And since the European Union approved this, they have some more credibility. They have some legitimacy and they have them to come to their defense. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it also got blocked in the US as well from the FTC. So they have to go to court 
against the FTC and they got to figure it out. They got to hash it out. Now, there's basically been two things, as far as I'm aware, that have been a big part of this conversation as to why the deal shouldn't go through. Part of the conversation has been Call of Duty and an even bigger part of that has actually been the cloud services that ABK can offer, I think, especially when it comes to mobile games. There's basically two sides to the conversation. There's one side that's saying it's bad for competition, it's going to harm consumers, and then there's the other side, which is obviously Microsoft saying that it's going to be good for competition and it will be good for consumers. Whether or not one side is right and the other one is wrong, only time will tell. That's if the deal even goes through. If it doesn't go through, then we'll never know. If it does go through, then we just have to wait and see what they actually decide to do and how it's all going to play out. Which could be why the government is erring on the side of caution and not just allowing it to happen and go through immediately. There's also people who have been saying that the government is super out of touch and they don't even know what a fucking controller is, so... Yeah! I'm not exactly sure what to think at this point. But this is where my little conspiracy theory is going to come in about why they're possibly doing stuff like this. Because Activision has been getting some not so great press lately. Not just because of the sexual assault allegations in 2021 and that whole lawsuit that's pending. I, I don't really know exactly what's going on with it. But that did happen. And then since then, there's been some other things going on that have also given them some not so great press. Modern Warfare 2 had a very successful launch, but it seems like they've been wanting to tank it since then. They haven't been listening to the community. They haven't been making a lot of changes. They don't listen to the community. The player numbers have obviously gone down since launch. I mean, that's probably a given for any game, typically. But going back to SM2, they were not the only people to receive cease and desist from Activision. There were also people who made custom maps and like experiences in Fortnite with the Creative 2 updates that had Call of Duty maps and stuff like that. They went after them and they issued them cease and desist. Now, I mean, that's a little bit more understandable because these mappers, the modders on Fortnite, they can make money, they can turn a profit. Granted, again, it's not going to be anything remotely close to what Call of Duty generates, but they can still monetize it and at the end of the day it is activision's ip it's their assets so they can do what they want with it and they decided to fucking go after someone who's probably gonna make pennies off of a pretty neat fortnite cod experience so yip de doo a that's some great press isn't it <laughs> same thing with activision shutting down the sm2 project i mean yeah that's great press everyone loves to hear stuff like that you've made the community so happy but it's not even just call of duty man i also saw some stuff about how overwatch 2 they're canceling like the campaign or pve stuff or both of it Something like that. Again, this is something that a lot of people were looking forward to, and they've just decided to scrap it. It's not a good look for them. People are not happy with this information. Now, since I'm a little bit of a dummy, this is all that's really coming to my brain, to my mind right now. But I'm sure there's other stories, other things that have happened coming from Activision, possibly even Blizzard or King as well, since 2021. That has probably not been good press. It's probably, they've probably been doing some things that players are not happy with. That the community and the fans are probably not in agreement with. And this is where Papa Merck's big conspiracy theory comes into play. What if they're purposely tanking the reputation of Activision to make things look better for this deal going on with Microsoft? Because like I've been trying to reiterate throughout this entire video, Activision is all about the Benjamins, boy. The potential money that the Fortnite mappers could make or the potential money that Activision would lose from SM2 basically allowing people to play their game for free is nothing compared to the actual money that they make from new CODs. It's not even fucking remotely close. Think about it, bruh. As an example sample size, right? And this is gonna be extremely generous. I'm, I'm gonna pull up the SM2 Twitter right now. I don't know if this is their biggest following, so just bear with me. Okay, so they got 44,000 followers on Twitter. I think their YouTube channel actually might have more subs, but let's just assume, we'll round it up, we'll go to 50,000. If 50,000 people pirated Modern Warfare Remastered on Steam, which now I've got to look up how much money it costs to get that. Okay, so Modern Warfare Remastered is $40 at its baseline on Steam. If we multiply 50,000 by 40, you have $2 million. We're talking about $2 million lost. Sounds like a lot of money, right? Oh, $2 million. They wipe their hairy buttholes with that money every single day. Thanks to all of the bundle enjoyers on Modern Warfare 2, they take that amount of money and they piss and shit all over it, bro. Now it is still $2 million lost. And assuming that this actually happens, like let's say everyone actually did pirate Modern Warfare Remastered, right? And then they went on to play SM2. Well, guess what? Realistically, the SM2 team would have been taken to court for probably two plus million dollars and damages, which would have not been fun either. That would have been really bad for them. And yeah, that would have been actually tragic. But ultimately the point I'm trying to make here is that when it comes to Activision, they don't really care about thousands of dollars, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars. They are working in the ballpark of billions of dollars. So they are looking at the grand scheme of things, the big picture. People making Call of Duty maps in Fortnite 
and the SM2 team making their project is really not important to them. They don't care. That's not on their roadmap to getting the most amount of money possible as a publicly traded company. But what is most likely their focus right now is making sure that they can be acquired by Microsoft. Potentially because of some ongoing litigation? I cannot fully confirm or deny that because I don't know the full specifics of everything. And I can probably Google it real quick because again, me brain don't work too good. I don't know exactly how much Microsoft is wanting to buy Activision for, but I think it's billions and billions of dollars if I'm not wrong. I'm in a corner. Let's go look it up real quick. How much money is Microsoft buying? Activision 4. There we go. It is 68.7 billion dollars. <laughs> that is a big chunk of cheese there, buddy. We're not talking about a potential two million dollars of stolen copies of Modern Warfare Master. No, we're talking about 68 billion dollars. So in their eyes, anything that can increase the likelihood of that happening is probably exactly what they want. Now again, none of this is fact. None of this is completely true. It is just my observation, my speculation from what I know. And I'm sure you guys know this. I am not someone who makes custom Fortnite experiences. I have never done that in my life. I am not a developer. I did not work on the SM2 project and I don't work for Activision. I am simply just a nerd who fucking plays way too much Call of Duty and covers it and makes YouTube videos and streams it as well. That is the extent of what I do. I am just sharing my opinions and thoughts with you guys. Motherfucking freedom of speech, baby. But yeah, I think that's basically everything that I wanted to say for this video. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to me ramble for probably too long about things that may or may not be true. But I really did just want to get this off of my chest and get this video out there because I like to be right about stuff. <laughs> I don't know if it's completely right or wrong, but you never know. We could come back to this video and reflect later on. We'll see if this ages well or if it ages poorly. But with that being said, I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did and you want to see some more boy stuff, make sure to drop a like. I'll see you guys later.